Hello, my name is Laura Jarvis and we are here at Rainbow Gardens Nursery. Today we are going to talk about orchids. We get lots of questions about orchids. They are uh, a little different from the rest of the plants. Um, these are what we call an epiphyte. An epiphyte has air roots and they hold on instead of actually growing in the soil and bringing in the, the moisture and the food value from the soil, they bring in the food value from their surrounding air, mist, rain, water, that type of thing. So first of all, let's talk about um, the, the general care of these. This is an Oncidium, and Oncidiums have lots of, of small blooms, and they can come in all different colors, and they are just cute as they can be. Um, typically, they're going to have uh, a big fan-type bulb, and this one is really, really healthy right now. It has sent up a bloom stalk. A lot of times, our bloom stalks are going to need uh, uh, some type of staking, that's why you see a lot of times the little stakes in there. The bloom stalks can get so heavy once they bloom out that they start falling over. And they sure look a lot prettier if we have some type of a, a little stake. We use the, the bamboo a lot. Um, but general care is going to be really, really bright light or when they're indoors in the house, I actually like them where they're getting some sun from a window where it comes across the room and, and flushes sun all over this plant or morning sun where it's coming in that east window. Um, so it gets some actual sun. So they're a high light plant, not a low light plant. Um, but if we have them outside, we're gonna keep them in a shaded area. I like mine under the canopy of a very, very large tree and a lot of times I'll put my orchids out for the summer and then bring them back in in the fall. Now a lot of people say, how do we get our orchids to bloom? That's a super good question. And typically they're going to want to bloom in the fall and winter season. So a lot of these orchids are gonna send up these beautiful little bloom spikes uh, starting probably in November. And the cool thing about orchids is they bloom for a very, very long period of time. So if I've got one that's starting to bloom, it's going to bloom throughout most of the winter for me. And that, that is really exciting because you get a lot of nice, beautiful color in those months when we're not outside as much and we want things to look a little bit fresher indoors. So it's a great plant for that type of thing. Bring us a, a little bit of enjoyment in the middle of the winter months. Okay, so typically these are gonna arrive or you're gonna purchase them with several different types of mediums. I like this a lot. And you can see how these beautiful little uh, roots, they don't have as large a air roots as our Phalaenopsis there. They're a lot finer, but this is a lava rock and um, it works really super well because that water just just flushes right through and goes out and it doesn't hold a ton of moisture next to these beautiful roots. Second of all, we're gonna pick a, a, a pot to repot this in that has holes in it. We want good aeration for our roots, but we don't wanna get too large a pot. Uh, we're used to potting up things that are, are potted in soil and we're always going up a size or two sizes so those roots have plenty of room to grow. Orchids are different. We're going to use a fairly small pot. We're not going to get a lot larger. In fact, I would say this is, is as large as we want to go for a nice four or five inch size root ball. I am going to use bark to transplant this. I like bark better than anything else, unless you have a really good source of this beautiful lava stone, uh, lava rock. It's got all those little air pockets in the rock itself. But a, a good 
chunky bark that's small pieces of chunk. Um, it is going to drain really, really well. And over the years, if you have them long term, it starts to break down a little bit and uh, it kind of adds some nutritional value there. Most of our nutritional value from these is going to come through the air and through um, a foliar type of feed or a drench. And um, I like, has to grow. It works really, really well. I found that out kind of by accident because I kept uh, splashing my orchid at the roots and the foliage with the has to grow when I was feeding other plants out in my yard. And my goodness, it just started going crazy on me. It got so huge. It just bloomed away come fall. Uh, so it was unintentional use of it, but I found out that they really, really like that a lot. Uh, there are several uh, pre-mixed fertilizers, and this is one that's already mixed, and they even call it a foliar food. So you're gonna spray it on the leaves, you can drench a little bit on that base or a little bit on those air roots, so your orchid can take that in to the, the plant itself and utilize those vitamins. So this is so easy, it's almost like not repotting something. Just a wonderfully easy, easy little thing to do. So there already, it's done. Now for me, I like taking this over to my sink, spritzing it with a, a pot sprayer, letting that drip off. If there's anything left in my attached saucer, I want to put that sideways and pour that off. I never want orchids sitting in water. The number one failure of someone who has an orchid plant or, or why an orchid will die is that it's too wet on those nice air roots. They need super good air circulation and they don't want to be really wet. Always dry out in between each of your waterings. So good sun, good aeration on your roots, the proper pot, and a fertilizer on a regular basis. I don't have to use those as much as I would a normal outdoor plant. If I'm using the has to grow once a month is great. And then if you're using one that's pre-mixed, just go by your directions. Always reading your directions on your fertilizers. And it's just that simple, guys. So I hope you'll go out and get yourself an orchid and enjoy it through the beautiful winter months. And um, happy gardening.